Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. From the Ball Watch Company comes a bruiser. Not as big as it looks, but just as solid as you'd imagine. This is the Ball Engineer Hydrocarbon Aero GMT2 in stainless steel. 42 millimeters, according to Ball. It looks and feels a bit larger than that, but it wears compact thanks to an ingenious case form that I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this is a big bruiser, but it's not a big bully. I can easily wear this watch because of the camber of the case, and if you look at the actual arc of the case, you can see it's almost a banana that wraps around the wrist. So 42 millimeters in diameter, not including the crown device. It's a reasonably slim watch at only 13.8 millimeters thick. I would have guessed more like 16 or 17, but nope, 13. 13.8 verified with my calipers. Lug to lug, my calipers find that this watch is big, 53.5, and its largest dimension is going to be end link to end link, where it has an impressive stance, Royal Oak Offshore style, of just over 57 millimeters, 57.3. But again, the curvature of the case means you might be able to fit this on a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. And I don't normally say that about watches that stretch almost 60 millimeters across the wrist. It is all in stainless steel, and I'm going to take the timepiece off and demonstrate that. The bracelet, likewise, in steel, has a 21 millimeter lug spacing, but you can see that this is a highly proprietary fitment system with double screws retaining the end link. So you're going to want to stick with either a strap from Ball or the factory's own bracelet, and I see no reason to swap. The bracelet feels like the anchor chain of a battleship or something you would use to guard your bicycle in New York City. Incredibly redoubtable. A combination of polish and satin with a surprisingly subtle bevel down the flanks. You can see every removable link including the double half links fixed by screws, not pin sleeves. And you'll appreciate that there are double half links on both sides for precise sizing. Now the clasp, let's take a quick look on the underside. As you can see, big gaps to vent the wrist on a hot day and avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. The clasp is shockingly solid. It feels like a bank vault. And the combination of double deployant and trigger with a robust mechanism and huge machine swing arms means that this watch not only is going to stay put, but it feels as solid and confidence inspiring as anything you'd find in a Rolex catalog, including the Deep Sea. Now, speaking of Rolex, Ball has its own version of the Easy Link Quick Adjustment System. It's a fold out, but it's present on both sides of the clasp, unlike Rolex's single sided mechanism. And in total, you get 22 millimeters of extension which is far more than the five you find on a Rolex. You'll also note that there are two alternate anchoring points for the bracelet inside of both clasps, so you do have additional adjustability in addition to the half links, the full links, and the fold out on both sides. Of course, the twin trigger system, meaning it's no cheap friction fit or clamshell mechanism, and it all feels hewn from a solid ingot of steel. Very impressive. Back to the case. Okay, you can see once again twin screws used to fix those end links, and the end links nicely profiled to match the flank of the case. Satin lug hoods, polished flank, once again, this is a watch with a camber that is up there with the best of Richard Mille. It does wrap itself over and around the wrist. Ergonomic superb here. Uh, the timepiece has a bezel, let's jump out a little bit, that is sapphire capped, like what you'll find on an S500 from Bremont or a 50 Fathoms from Blancpain. It's a bi-directional rotating GMT style bezel, so make no mistake, it's not a diver's bezel, but it gives you the ability to temporarily read a third time zone, as there is an independent 24-hour hand that complements the 12-hour local time hand on the dial, and the dial a beautiful granular blue like a Patek Leap 5524. So with this bi-directional, sapphire capped and fully loomed GMT bezel, you can read a third time zone, including at night. By the way, the ratchet of this bezel puts every GMT style bezel I've ever encountered to shame. There's also a nice depth to this dial as it has a dished ray hot outboard featuring a 12 hour scale that smooths the transition from the bezel down to the dial base. White on blue, high contrast printing, and you'll note several tracers being used here. 44 tracers in total, including on the hands. They are self-activating tritium light tubes that contain gas, fully encapsulated. They can easily be replaced as modular units every 12 years when the, when the tritium dies. But the nice thing about having H3 on your wrist is that it never needs to be activated. So if you put it in a dive locker, for example, for two years, 
fingers and then pull it out in the middle of the night, it's still glowing. This watch features both Luminova and Tritium and you're gonna see that in a moment. The crown protection device, easy to use. You simply push down on it and pivot. It's like Panerai's system, only it's smarter. It uses a combination of small micro-machined parts and retention springs in conjunction with a conventional shear guard as well as a screw down crown. The watch is 100 meters water resistant and it features a ETA 28932 in chronometer spec. So you have the ability to stop the seconds, adjust everything in sync. You also have, thanks to the 2893 architecture, the ability to independently adjust both the 24 hour second time zone and quick set the date. Most watches like the Rolex GMT Master don't give you a conventional quick set when you have a dual time function. And you just screw that crown right back down. You can't accidentally close the protection device while the crown is threaded out. So it acts as insurance against accidental drowning of your watch. Underneath the case back, which features a series of useful GMT offset guides if you are traveling with the watch and using the bezel in anger. This is what Ball calls its caliber RR1201C. I call it an ETA28932 in COSC chronometer spec. Automatic winding, 21 joules, dual time, quick set, stop seconds. It features a 42 hour power reserve and it is tank tough as well as being fairly slim and enabling this watch to come in at under 14 millimeters thick. Ball gives you a lot for your money and in this case, not just a lot of watch but a lot of quality and a lot of features. A clever design and one that'll fit a surprisingly small wrist. You can see this Aero GMT and make it yours on the watch box. Ball Aero GMT2 takes a moment for the eyes to adjust to the tritium tracers, but once you do, you've got differential color to set all the different hands indications and scales apart. See it on the watch box.